When my wife and I moved to Atlanta in 2000, we looked around for the church that we wanted to affiliate with, and we decided on Central Presbyterian Church. It was our kind of church. It had a justice ministry. It had good worship and excellent preaching, and that's the church that we wanted to be a part of. The pastor invited all of us who were joining or affiliating with that church to meet with the session for dinner one night, and we did in the fellowship hall, big rectangular table. And after dinner, he stood up and he said, I am so pleased that you are becoming a part of the life of this church. I'd like to go around the table and each of you introduce yourself and and say why it is that you have chosen this church. First person said, well, I'm a tenor. The music program here is superb and I'm looking forward to being a part of the choir. Uh, The next person said, we have two teenage daughters. They tell us that the youth program is really hot here and we wanted a church that had something for them. The next person said, well, frankly, I don't like the minister in the church that I'm in now, and I like the minister here fine, so I'm going to change churches. And it was like that all the way around the table until we got to Marshall, graying ponytail, metal studs in his face. His story was that he had stumbled into the outreach center high on crack cocaine and begging for help. The director of the outreach center had said, I am sorry, I'm out of budget money this month. I can't get you into a treatment program until next month. But then she took his hands and said, but I promise if you will stay with us, we will stay with you. And they knelt on the floor of her office and prayed. And Marshall said, I've been sober for three years. I'm joining this church because God saved me in this church. We all looked at each other sheepishly. We were there for the music and the parking. He was there for the salvation. (laughs) Several months later, there was a little squib in the church newsletter. Marshall was now an inmate in the DeKalb County Jail. He and I had joined the church together. We were brothers in Christ, so I went to visit him. Three metal detectors later, I found myself on the opposite side of a thick piece of plate glass. On the other side was Marshall in the orange jumpsuit of a prison inmate. I had a phone, he had a phone. I said, Marshall, how are you doing? By the grace of God, he said, I'm doing well. I said, Marshall, what happened? He said, I was working in the outreach center, counseling people off the street, people like myself. I was telling them that the power of God was with them and that they could do right. I realized, though, that I hadn't done right myself, not entirely. I had an old warrant out here for my arrest, so old it would never have caught up with me, but I knew about it. And so on Christmas Eve, I turned myself in. But I'll be out by Easter, and I cannot wait to worship God at Central on Easter. In the meantime, I've got a little outreach center going here in my cell. He said, a lot of the guys here can't read or write, and so I sit with them and write letters home to those they love, telling them they miss them and love them. Every night we have a prayer meeting. Uh, Not many come, but we pray for the other prisoners and for the guards. And I'm looking through a piece of plate glass at a guy in an orange prison jumpsuit, and then I squinted. And I don't think I've ever seen anyone more free. 